course, is a longtime activist of, on behalf of freedom and the Constitution uh, here in the United States of America. He runs Camp Constitution. So, Hal, you've been at this for for a while. Um, tell uh, the folks a little bit about Camp Constitution um, and what, what you guys do there. And, and I don't know what your plans are for, for this year, but tell us a little bit about that, and then we'll, then we'll circle around to the protest movement that you've been involved with. Sure. Well, Camp Con- we founded, I'm the co-founder and current director of Camp Constitution. I'm the only full-time person, or maybe full-time and a half, but it's a real labor of love. <laughs> uh, we were founded back in 2009 as a charitable trust, where at that point we were just running a week-long family camp in the summer. But as time went on, we started a publishing on. We have our own radio show up in uh, Maine. We uh, have a speakers bureau. We host or house the Sam Blumenfeld Archives, which is a wonderful online resource for homeschoolers, historians, researchers, teachers, students, etc. Uh, Sam was a dear friend, and he passed away in 15 and left uh, his library and his papers to us. And we uh, PDF'd and scanned a lot of them in, and um, it's, we get about 2 million views. Last year, we got 2 million views. So. And recently, a lot more because uh, everybody's a homeschooler these days. Right, right. What you and your wife did, everyone's doing now, right, Hal? That's um, right, that's right. Hal, how do people see your, see, see your material? What's, what's the website? What's the best way to see Camp Constitution? The website is campconstitution.net, and there there'll be links to our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our events, uh, although most of all, all the events for the last you know, couple of months have been canceled, unfortunately. But we still plan to hold our annual family camp, which runs from July 19th to the 24th at the Singing Hills Christian Camp in Plainfield, New Hampshire, which is about an hour north from Concord, right, uh, just due south of um, uh, West Lebanon. And we have a great lineup of instructors, as we do every year, including uh, actually a British lord, Lord Christopher Monson. This will be his third year at camp. Uh, we have Professor Willie Soon, one of the world's top atmospheric scientists and climate realists. We have Alex Newman, who was a writer and author. He was a colleague of Sam Blumenfeld's, and uh, he'll be there with his whole family. And, and we have uh, Mrs. Catherine White, who runs a class called Can't the Constitution Decoded. And C.J. Uh, Pearson, the young black conservative from the Atlanta area, is also going to be there. So we're looking forward to a great camp this year. What, and what are the dates on that, Hal, and are there still availability? Yes. Oh, yes. July 19th to the 24th. So it's Sunday afternoon till Friday morning. And in the event that the camp is canceled due to circumstances beyond our control, everybody who has enrolled will get a full refund. So perfect, we're, perfect. Uh, I was just in touch with the folks. We don't own the f- facility, although we do hope to have one someday. Uh, and the New Hampshire governor up there, he's... Uh, He's really uh, beating the drums against anybody from Massachusetts. I guess they think we're all lepers. And uh, if you <laughs> if you live, in he's not wrong, Al. Huh? He's not one hundred percent wrong. <laughs> well, you know, I think we're number three in the virus, but you yeah. know, the, most of the casualty of fatalities have regrettably been in nursing homes. Sixty-five, seventy percent of the fatalities are people over eighty and so forth. So. Uh, but uh, it's also a violation of the Constitution, so we'll have uh, we'll have to have a class on on the uh, on Article Four, Section Two. It says that people from one state can enjoy enjoy the full privileges and et cetera of people from other states. So what he's doing is really unconstitutional. We have seen quite a bit of that activity uh, this year, and I, 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 in, in, in one of the things that you you Hal, have have done is um, been one of the organizers of the citizen movement here in the state to uh, re- remind the government who, who's, who's ultimately in charge. Talk a little bit about that protest and, and, and how you think things have worked so far. Well, the first one was a freedom rally, and that was organized by my friend John Hugo of that subversive group called Super Happy Fun America. And that was about uh, two and a half weeks ago where we met. It was our Friday. We met at the uh, New England Aquarium in downtown Boston. There were about 40 vehicles. Uh, my son was with me in our van that had a stencil Camp Constitution or the picture of Uncle Sam, and we had the Christian flag. My son was uh, waving outside, and of course, that has a special significance since uh, we have a lawsuit against the city of Boston in federal court because we were denied uh, a permit to fly the flag for a ceremony. Uh, it's still ongoing. And we drove all throughout the city, uh, we, the South End, the Financial District, the North End, uh, et cetera, 
it was a lot of fun. We got mostly we got thumbs up, and of course we were saying open up the city, open up the state, and we did get some people who demonstrated, showed us their IQ by pointing their little <laughs> finger at us, uh, and a few people spat at us. But for the most part, surprisingly, they were in our favor. Now this past uh, last Monday, uh, there was a rally at the state house steps, and it was uh, Jeff Pooner. Uh, can I say his name on the on, on your yeah. show? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, he's uh, he's a uh, host in uh, the Greater Boston area, radio show host in the Greater Boston area, and there was a man named Wolfman. I guess he's a uh, Wolfman. He's a motorcycle club member. I think bikers for Trump maybe, and then John Hugo, and there were others. Uh, and you know, we all invited the people we in, in our circle, so to speak. And I was there with Reverend Stevie Kraft and some other friends, and there was about two thousand people. None of us, uh, some people wore masks, most didn't, and we weren't social distancing. We were kind of close, and that's what happens. And we, I actually recorded or uh, videotaped the, uh, the, the speeches, and it's on our YouTube channel. Just go to Camp Constitution on the YouTube channel. And Jeff Cooner, and there was Dave Kopatz, and John, it wasn't a very long ceremony, but it was really encouraging. And, you know, uh, the, the leftist narrative is, oh, you know, they're all neo, um, neo-Nazis uh, <laughs> uh, at, the, at the State House. And there was a Globe reporter that was wishing that we got the virus. And there was another fellow, a friend of his, that were advocating that there should have been a sniper there. But for Beautiful. some reason, when, when you're on the left, you can make, you can make ugly comments like that and threats, and it's, not, it's a non-issue. But um, uh, so my, uh, one person said it was they were neo-Nazis, and I said, no, neo-Nazis, uh, Nazis, Nazi stands for National Socialism. Uh, under a Nazi regime, there was strict gun control, and you had no right to assemble peaceably to redress your grievances, uh, which is our constitutional right under a God-given right protected by the Constitution, as well as the state constitution. Yes, indeed, there is a state constitution that precedes the U.S. Constitution by about seven years. John Adams was a primary author, and uh, you should. I recommend that everybody listen to this show, call their state rep or email their state rep and state senator and ask them for one. They take an oath to defend it. They may not know anything about it, uh, but they should be familiarized themselves. Because Part the First talks about freedom of worship, freedom of assembly, freedom of speech. And it doesn't mention anything about freedom to go maskless, but it, it doesn't. It, Charlie, Charlie Parker, as he's referred to lately, uh, has no constitutional authority to uh, mandate that people wear masks. Um, healthy people wear masks, especially. So uh, there's other rallies. In fact, I'm, I'm heading down to your, your way uh, at the gun, sh- uh, gun run or gun shop where there's going to be uh, a little rally. Actually, to thank John Costa for t- having the courage to stand up to Baker. And Baker had to relent and open up the gun shop. So that's happening at 2 o'clock right in uh, Middleborough. At the gun shop, it's off. Of, it's on 28 Route 28. Uh, the gun runner. It's called the gun runner. I think gun runner's gun shop. We we have another one of our sponsors here, uh, Shooting Supply in Westport. They, they were they were also party to that uh, oh, to that I lawsuit think, as yes, well. I think uh, yeah, they're right on Route um, the main road. They're Route yeah, Route, route six. six. Yeah. Yes, I yes, I think I know the owner. He's the same guy that's been there since the 90s. He's a good man. Yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely good, good, good folks. Hey, look, the people that own the gun stores and run the gun stores and and uh, are, are are all great, great people. We're speaking with Hal Shirtliff, who's the uh, the head of uh, Camp Constitution. He's one of the a real leader here in the freedom movement in the United States for for decades now. Hal, if we can believe that. Um, well, and, and since Hal, the late eighties, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since you got out of the army, right? Um, the Camp Constitution, again, people, people listening right now, and they're probably very impressed with your, your knowledge about stuff. People learn all this stuff at your camp, right? Yes. Uh, we have a lot of good old-fashioned fun. That's why it's a family camp. We do have unaccompanied minors and adults that come to help out. And we actually have uh, classes geared towards young people, say 5 to, five to 11. We call that the Junior Camp or Patriot Camp, where they learn about our wonderful history. We're not ashamed of our history. You know, we, we've had blemishes like every nation does. But we're very proud of our history. Our, our motto was honoring the past, teaching the present, preparing the future. Um, and we also have classes on the Constitution, on current events, on the threats that the United States faces, like uh, Agenda 21, the Green New Deal, the myth of global warming. And again, we have some top, top-notch uh, instructors. And we actually have some of our homegrown, some of our instructors had been campers uh, in the past, and now we're teaching classes, so we're very proud of it. In fact, we're going to have a young, really soon son, Benjamin, 
uh, is going to be giving a class on the history of scare t- uh, scaremongering, you know, from the LR scares to the the world's going to come to an end in 17, 1976, the population. You remember the population bomb by Ehrlich? Rachel right. Carson, Silent Spring, and all these other books that get scare people. And the government does a great job, and they're doing it. You know, it's so it's almost like a, a Alice in Wonderland um, scenario. People are walking around in masks. They think somehow those little masks. You know, you're in the military, like guy. We all were trained in nuclear, biological, chemical warfare. <laughs> if we walked out with those little masks, we would be caught by stupidity. You know? <laughs> not Where's your mop gear, Private? <laughs> What's Where's your that? mop gear? Where's your mop gear, Private? Right? Yeah, that's right, mop gear, right? <laughs> yeah, and uh, and we we learned uh, the how that gas you know, we, we had to go to a gas chamber. They took that we had to take those masks off, and we, we used to train. Um, I was in the peacetime Cold War Army. Thank God I didn't have to. I uh, wasn't in the Gulf War, but um, we had a we had a train with those with, with gas. So we would have our pretty. I mean, we weren't firing live rounds, but they would throw real tear gas at us during those training. Uh, and that mask better be ready. And so uh, these these little. And the other thing too is that you see people who have, oh they, they they have these nice N95 masks, you know, surgical masks. You know, there's a label, there's a warning on the label of these masks that said improper use can result in sickness or death. She signed me up, and people are fidgeting. They're putting their hands all over. And because they're wearing them for long periods of time, it's uncomfortable. So they're fidgeting with them. They're basically nullifying any uh, positive effect they may have when they do that, but they don't realize it. You know, it's, it, it, it's, it's, look, I think for some people, wearing a mask is fine, but, but you're right. It's, 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 I don't know, it's like everyone drinking fluoride, right? Um, so, well, if you want to, I think if you have a condition, yeah. sure you should wear one, but don't think that putting that mask on if you're healthy is going to somehow uh, save, the, save, save you. I mean, I, it is a, there's a face, uh, not a Facebook page, but a thing called nextdoor.com. It's like local Facebooking and, uh, there was they, they actually there was one guy who tried to use it as a way to snitch on the neighbor. He took a picture of a couple young couple with their children. Who are these people? They're not wearing masks, you know. I mean, committee for the defense of the revolution. It's amazing. <laughs> which is the old, which is the Cuban uh, or the Nicaraguans. So, Hal, listen, again, give people, a, I appreciate you spending some time with us too, Hal, by the way. Um, and and oh, one thing too is on your Facebook, you, you have a lot of neat items that you that you raffle off as ways to raise money for Camp Constitution. Yes. Uh, so well, people can check that stuff out, right? Yeah, uh, that's on my personal Facebook page, the Hal Shirtlift. Uh, there are some other Hal Shirtlifts, but uh, they're distant relatives. A few of them live down to your way too, like fourth or fifth cousins. But you'll see Hal Shirtliff. It'll be a picture of my late friend, Dr. Mildred Jefferson, I'm with. Uh, so that would be me. And uh, what happens is people donate things to us on a regular basis, uh, books and things. And uh, I sell, sell some of the books on Amazon and some of them on our website and some of them just on our Facebook page. That includes our camp T-shirts. We have, Every year we have Made in USA 100% cotton shirts. That, uh, a couple of years ago I... Uh, uh, we had one that had a picture of uh, your namesake, uh, Joseph McCarthy, and uh, it was like a shake of arrow looking up. Uh, it said, uh, told you so. <laughs> <laughs> I love that shirt, Hal. I love that. So, folks, go. Well, go yeah, ch- yeah. all I have is small, so we're going to have to make some new ones up. You're going to have to go on a diet, lose a few pounds before you can squeeze in. It was small. So. <laughs> those days those days are over for me, Hal. I'll never be as small <laughs> I again. Never, I've been as small as I was 10. But, uh, yeah, no, no, me neither. So, Hal, listen, again, give, give folks a, their website, how they can check it out, uh, Camp Constitution. Yes, campconstitution.net, and there you can find information about our summer camp. You can see the sample. If you're a homeschooler or educator, teacher, historian, you could see the sample. Or just someone who's curious. And intellectually curious, you can see the Sam Blumenfeld archives, a link to our Amazon, and a link to our Facebook page, our YouTube account, and probably a few other things there, too. In our great, camp great. bookstore, too. Yeah. Thanks, Hal. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon, All my right. friend. Uh, right. Hal Shirtliff, uh, good, good man, good man.